So, uh, so I've got some questions that, uh, that may need to be directed at the authority. But uh, just to recap, we it's great. The um, uh, national reform agenda that was announced in 2008 uh, included $150 million in funding. And as I understand it, the goal was to establish Australia as a world leader in organ donation. Um, Australia is ranked 22nd still at about 14.9 donors per million uh, of population. Uh, I'm just wondering if the uh, authority consider the national reform agenda as it's currently tracking to be a success. Uh, Yael Kath, CEO of the Organ and Tissue Authority. Um, the answer is yes, Senator. <laughs> I can tell you right. what she's going to say, yes. I can give you a precy of our outcomes, annual outcomes to the end of 2011 and year to date, um, if that would assist you. Um, but I suppose the short answer is that in the two years of full implementation of this national reform agenda since 2009, Australia has seen a 36 per cent increase in the number of deceased organ donors, um, last year achieving 337 donors. We have achieved 1,009 transplant recipients at the end of last year, which is a 25% increase over two years. And 1,041 organs actually transplanted, which is a 22% increase over two years. Though that means that there has been um, uh, a strong increase in the last two years, by no means do we consider that the work is complete and there is much more that needs to be done to ensure that Australia continues to achieve increases in its organ donation rates. Can I also just correct one stat in your question? In 2011, we achieved a donor per million population rate of 15.1. 15.1, not 14.9, yep. thank you. Um, the target for this year? The target for this year is 16.3. And I note that um, during the nine months of the year, there looks like there have been fewer uh, number of donors as the corresponding period in 2011. So it looks to me as though you're not going to achieve that target. So at the end of September um, 2012, we um, have had um, 256 deceased donors, which is 1% higher than year to date last year. 1% higher. 1% higher. So and in terms of a couple of donors, it sounds like. Recipients and organs transplanted, it's um, virtually on the knocker for right. organs transplanted. It's so, exactly so, the same. So we were on, if we achieve 15.1 last year, we look like we're bang on track to achieve the same number this year. The target 16.3, so we're well short of the target set for this year. I think that um, we, are, we are achieving um, consistent rates with last year, slightly higher than last year. We have achieved you know, a 36% increase in terms of donor numbers in two years. The key lessons that we've learned from international best practice, which is the model that has informed the, uh, are the models that inform Australian practice, is that this is not an instant um, reform agenda. This is an agenda which is about changing the nature of clinical practice in intensive care and end of life care in our public hospital system. And that takes five to ten years to achieve solid, sustained growth. Well, um, I suppose we might differ on the international evidence because in countries like Portugal and Croatia, where there have been similar reform programs, they've had much, um, a much more significant increase over a much shorter period of time. So we might differ on that point. But just to be clear, it looks like we are not going to achieve the target that's been set for 2012. So, sorry, Senator, I'll just go to um, the statement first in that question, sure. if you don't mind. Sure. Um, because 
We um, very carefully monitor um, both the models, the practices, the outcomes that are being uh, pursued um, internationally, and we particularly look at Croatia and Spain um, and Portugal um, as, uh, as key comparators. And as you may know, the Spanish model is fundamentally um, the Australian model, um, plus um, key learnings that are derived from the United States uh, around managing the family donation conversation. But we particularly look at the outcomes achieved in those key international comparators over similar periods to the Australian reform agenda. So in um, the early years of the implementation in Spain, Portugal and Croatia. And um, the rate of growth that Australia has achieved in the first two years, which is 1.9 average over those two years, is comparable, if not better, than many of those countries. So Croatia's average rate of growth in its first two years was in the order of 0.8, 0 0.8 DPMP. They've certainly achieved significant growth in the more than 10 years in which they've implemented their reform agenda, with incredibly strong growth in the last year or two. Um, but the point to be drawn from that is that it's an extensive work program that they have implemented and that we are also implementing, which is about training staff, monitoring staff performance, um, and reviewing uh, performance and strategies to continually improve identification, requesting and consent of donors. Um, well, again, I, I, I take your point on the data, but I also uh, recognise that there's been a significant increase over a short period of time shortly after the implementation of um, uh, additional resources to this area in, in some countries, and I'm um, looking at some of the evidence that's before me. But let's, I just don't want to be distracted by that point. Sure. Um, so, but, so, so can I just make one point? Um, there are a large number of people who think that this is easy to do, and they think... Yep. And they okay. think I, I, because I probably don't I, and need I, a lecture on how difficult it is. Yeah, I just want to ask some no, 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 no. I questions. understand that, but we get told this all the time by sure. a bunch of people who think they can do this better, and that sure. this is not up to scratch. We have spent extensive amounts of time looking at the international evidence. We are very, very familiar with the critique, which clearly you have been briefed on, and we do not agree with it. Now, as uh, Ms. Cass has said, this is hard, it requires persistence over a long period. Uh, we know, for example, that there are going to be months when things drop off. We had that happen at the beginning of this year. You've gone to the figures for this year, you're quite right to do that. But let's be clear, there were a couple of months early in the year where performance dropped. I can promise you the entire executive were crawling all over poor old Ms Cass about why this was the case, CMO and everyone else involved. The bottom line is the numbers are moving inexorably upwards and yes, uh, this will continue to require us to focus and to push to get the kind of outcomes we want. But that was always our understanding of what would be required. Yeah, okay, so, I mean, the numbers are, or have moved previously upwards to, from what I can tell, 1989 levels. So it's not like we're making significant progress. And while in percentage terms... No, I no, it's, that's not... I'm sorry, Senator. That's the briefing you've gotten out of I know exactly who, and we have to contest that. That is not true. And I'm sorry, Ms Cass is going to have to correct you on that. OK, I'm happy to be corrected. And Senator, we do have limited time, so we'll go into here, and then maybe there can be a briefing arranged. So if I just briefly respond on that point. Over the last 21 years in which data has been collected um, on organ and tissue donation, there has been one year, the first year, 1989, in which Australia achieved 14 donors per million yep. population. Yep. For the entire period following that, it has been in the order of 9, 10 and 11. That's and the average... That's what I said. That's exactly Senator. the statement yeah, I but, made. But Senator. That's precisely what I said. No, no, I take issue with being yep. corrected on a point of fact, when the fact that I made was referring to a specific year, 1989. I said one year. But the we, are, we had collected data at 14 yes. donors and, and per Senator. million in 1989, and we've now slightly edged above that. I didn't make any comment about what occurred in, in the intervening period. 
And, and Senator, the intimation and the point that is made about that point by the people who argue this... Well, that wasn't my point. No, so but, if you've but, got but, an issue with something that somebody else has, please direct it at them, not at me. But, but our point is that this number and the point that they make is that this is no achievement. And our point is there was a one-off aberration. It is widely regarded as an aberration. It was not uh, something which is able to be and was sustained. It did not reflect the normal functioning of a system. The fact is that we now have consistent numbers, consistent delivery, and the trajectory, well, I can't say it, the trajectory is up. Well, the trajectory is not up. In fact, it's flat. And that's the reason that I'm asking these questions today. If the trajectory was up, on the basis of this year's figures, I probably wouldn't even be interested in having this discussion, but it appears that we're not even going to meet the target that has been set for this year. And the target, let's be frank about it, is about half of where uh, we want it to be. So it's a very modest target and we're not going to meet it. And the question I've got is why are we not going to meet it? Because of the first couple of months of this year, and that's exactly the point I was making, if you actually look at the month by month and state by state performance, which we do, there are very particular reasons at the beginning of this calendar year, which it might be better to have a separate briefing on this so we can actually take you through it. But there are particular reasons why the aggregate numbers for this year are what they are. They are explainable and in fact there's been a lot of work done on why this was the case and we would be delighted, given Senator Moore is going to kill me for keeping on talking, mm -hmm. um, because of the time constraint, we would be delighted to take you through those. I, I'm, I'm aware that I'm under time pressure, so perhaps we'll need to continue on this conversation later. Thank you. Senator, I just think it's such an important issue that we could sure. go on for a very long time. I've actually had a briefing, so I'm, I'm, you know, what I'm actually asking is why aren't we achieving the targets that the authority has set for itself? And the key point to make here, Senator, is that we know from international practice that this takes time to embed uh, clinical practice reform in our public hospital system. Croatia, as an example, had years of going up and down in terms of mm. its donation outcomes over the 10 years with a significant and dramatic growth in the last year. Now, what the message that we get directly from the heads of those reform agendas is that you have to train people, you have to monitor their performance and audit performance, and you have to correct performance. And, and that is exactly again. what we are doing. I look forward to seeing, to having a happier story to, to uh, quiz you about next year. Senator, we, are, uh, we do offer, though, a briefing, if you would uh, like to take that up. I've already had a briefing, thank you. From, a, from, a, from the, the authority. The authority? Yep. 